Old Jack Frost loves to give us anglers a tough time during these winter months. So I decided to give my bones a Blue Ridge break and head down Dixie Way for a bit. This is a gamble. I just kind of threw a dart at the map and was like, ah, let's go there. And it worked out. And that, oh, that makes it everything. Man. That's so cool. <laughs> Welcome to Georgia. Now I know what you might be thinking. North Georgia, what the heck, Mike? I know. I'll try and uh, explain everything as we get going, but I need to get geared up and on the river because it is already well into the afternoon and that sun, it's gonna be setting very, very soon. So let's get geared up and get after it. And I'll try and explain along the way. Yes, a bit more explanation is required. So being home for the holidays, home being the Midwest, I had a little extra time off and I was thinking about doing some adventuring. And I didn't really know where because the east was pretty cold, west under ice, and the north, that's a joke. So I set my sights on the southeast. I've never been east of Tennessee and I've never been south of Memphis, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to see a new part of the country and maybe chase some new trout. So we're gonna be spending the next few days hop hopping around the Blue Ridge Range in North Georgia. And we are sitting Riverside on an absolute gem. I mean, this stream looks insane this is so cool i need to get these rods set up asap rocky because yeah it's time to catch some fish i just want one but a few would be really sweet so yeah let's get to it all right look at split we are rigged up time check is right at one o'clock so i'm looking at that sun we have a couple hours to fish and piece something together so Let's get this uh, let's get this dog and pony show going. Let's go. Oh, whoa. I just saw an otter. There's an otter over there. Wow. Okay, well I hate to already be making excuses, but uh, yeah, conditions aren't the best right now. I don't know this creek, but it looks like uh, there must have been some high water recently. I know in the Midwest we got some crazy weather patterns that ran through, and I'm assuming, yeah, the residuals hit up here, but a lot of leaves in the water, and you can kind of see a visible water line that shows that the water I mean, very recently was pretty high. So, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or <laughs> the otters that are uh, going and eating all the trout. I'm not sure. It's cool to see them though. That's really cool. Look who's back. I knew there were more than one, you little cheeky sons of guns. Hey, you guys eating the trout? Yeah, I see you. Well, it's good to keep those expectations low, especially on day one, if you can even call this day one. This is more of the travel day. I had budgeted in just enough time, you know, if I was diligent in my drive and made it out of St. Louis in good time to come and fish this section. And I really just wouldn't get my eyes on these kind of rivers, just kind of get a gauge on what they look like and, and how they fish. And today, a little tough. We had some uh, interesting conditions, let's just say, with a lot of leaves in the water, I'm assuming from some sort of rainstorm that happened here recently. And then, yeah, seeing the otter, those two things, that's kind of like the kiss of death. having tough conditions as far as not knowing the, the stage of water levels, be it up or down, and then yeah, having a cheeky otter come through and just 
rustle up all the trout. And you know, I don't even, I don't even mind. The, uh, just seeing that otter was so cool. I mean, there ought to be otters in every single river, but when you're fishing it, it's not the best thing. So it's no big deal. But right now, I have, I have got to run and chase that sun. I gotta kind of strip down, get everything kind of cinched down, and we're gonna run off this ridge because I need to. Well. I don't need to, but I would like to be driving out of here in the sun or with a little bit of light left because these uh, these red dirt roads, man, they're no joke. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Oh, it's so cool to be in Georgia. But yeah, let's get that all figured out right now and yeah, try and find ourselves a little place to snoozy snooze tonight. That bittersweet feeling of an otter-induced skunk is significantly dulled down by the natural beauty of a new place. I always try my best to avoid slipping into what I consider culture shock, but I think the Blue Ridges were pulling me in tight because this place was so beautiful. But we managed to make it back to the truck in no time flat, and we were racing down those forest roads as fast as we could. We had just enough light to make it up and over the next ridge to find a place to camp for tomorrow's adventure. Well folks, welcome to the crib. We are truck camping tonight. We've made it to our access point for tomorrow's adventure, so I'm gonna get to snoozing, dreaming of trout, so that hopefully tomorrow we can get on our first Georgia trout. So, we'll see you in the morning. Alrighty folks, time check is just after 7.30. Kind of a late start here, but that oh, that truck camping cocoon was so cozy. And it's kind of chilly still. I haven't seen the sun, but it's definitely sub 30s. It's gonna be kind of a chilly morning before that sun comes out. So, yeah, no better time to get the hike on now, and yeah, make our way down to Jack's River. That's where we're headed today. So, let's get after it. The dim glow was growing quick, and the rhythmic squish of our boots was going fast because we had no time to waste. As those boots mush matted down leaves, my mind brought back countless memories of watching various fly fishing videos all up and down the eastern United States. So, as the Georgia pines reached for the sky, touching that light, those deciduous skeletons were clattering in the air. And I gotta say, it was hard to believe I was here. I kind of felt like an imposter, but I was so ready to get out there and get after it. Well, we have made it to the Jacks River and it is time to get rigged up, maybe bundle back up, and hopefully, hopefully get on that first Georgia Trout. So let's get after it. Now, something as simple as layer management is absolutely key wherever you're fishing during these winter months. In just the time it took to get rigged up, which wasn't that long, I could already feel the morning chill creeping back in and my fingers were getting cold. The first few hours of our day were spent hole hopping up the river, and for how remote this section was, I was having a tough time getting away from signs of past angling accidents. So pressing further upstream seemed to be the best course of action at the time. However, the more we pushed, the river grew wider and it seemed to have a lot less structure. It wasn't looking nearly as fishy. Plus, the ridges on either side they were sloped sharp and the foliage looked super, super dense. So I was kind of getting myself into a hole and I needed to get out quick or I was gonna be trapped. So far, we have been grinding. I just got in a pretty big tussle with this ridge and all the kudzu and thorn bushes in it and I'm all bloody and it's just a mess. It's just, it's very frustrating so far. The research that I've done kind of let me down in a way this Jacks River is a lot bigger than what I thought and I haven't even seen a fish yet. They say that this is the wild trout like creme de la creme and so far it's just not happening. So I'm gonna go upstream just a little more. I refound the actual trail. That's another thing, these trails, oh man, they are barely trails. It's hard to follow them. You gotta be really careful on which, uh, which way you go because <laughs> you can get lost quick. But yeah, let's, uh, let's rally. Try and uh, kill this sweat and catch some dank fish at least. Just, just one. Just need one. This is what we're dealing with, folks. 
This is the main Jack's Creek Trail and it is an absolute disaster. I don't know if this is recent tree fall or what, but this is, God bless America, this is having, having some uh, bad effects on our trip. This is making, well, traveling very hard and then, yeah, logistics of getting from point A to point B, planning out places even harder. So, damn, this day is just turning into a mess. I'm turning around and heading back towards the trailhead. I could feel the frustration starting to mount as we doubled back towards the trailhead. This right here was a prime time example of how certain things can look good on paper versus how they actually are when your boots are on the trail experiencing them. But let my lapse in diligence be a lesson because no matter what the odds are, you should always be ready for that fish. Always on the golden boy. Don't have my net. I don't have my net. Holy shit. Folks, that's it right there. That is it right there. That's our first Georgia trout. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, this is what they look like, folks. That is a true blue Georgia beauty. That is wild as the day is long, and I am so relieved we finally found ourselves Blue Ridge trout through and through. God, oh man, I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. This is amazing. Well, what do you say, little guy? You ready to get back? <laughs> Let's send him back. See you, buddy. Thank you. Alrighty, our first fish is back in the drink, safe and sound. And I know there's a few of you folks out there who have the same sentiment. When, when I'm not catching fish, it's almost like fish don't even exist. I, I lose all faith in fish ever existing. And so I had kind of broken down my rods and I had packed up my net because I was running through some really nasty stuff, some real thick, thick stuff. And I was not ready to land that fish. I think it's important to always stay diligent and be uh, as ready as possible because right there I could have easily lost that fish because my net was nowhere to be seen. And I mean, I had to throw my stuff on the bank and scoop him up. It was a mess, but we got him. So uh, silver lining there is that, uh, yeah, we got the fish, but the lesson to be learned is to always be ready to catch that fish. So that is good. That is great. No, that that's amazing. I'm so happy that we could have actually got this fish. And I think now we're gonna jump back up on the trail and we're gonna go down to Jack's Fall because my my stomach, it's, it's very hungry and I wanna see this thing. It's Rumored to be one of the bigger waterfalls here in Georgia, and we're so close, so why not, you know? <laughs> so let's go. It is truly amazing how just one fish can completely turn a day around. It was the kick in the pants we needed to completely forget about all those thorns in our hands and the fishless miles under our boots. So once we actually made it to the falls, that cliff bar never tasted sweeter. But we couldn't get too comfortable because we still had fish to catch. The afternoon was moving well into the evening. We needed to capitalize on this evening bite. Yes, yeah, let's go. <laughs> On the top fly, baby. I hope y'all can hear me. It's super loud right here. My original plan was just to come to the waterfall, have a little, little lunch and maybe a drink and kind of chill out. I didn't expect to fish it, but when I got here, this pool right here looks so juicy. I'm talking like your mama made it. It looks so good. So I came down here and we hooked that one and we missed him and it was, oh, it was a nightmare. I was so sad. And just a couple casts later, we got this guy. He, he is so gorgeous. Let's, let's try and get a look at this guy. There we go, folks. That is one Jack's River gem right there. Just wild as the day is long and just so gorgeous, man. Oh, and just like that, he is back. Let's go, man. That is so sick. That is so nice. That makes me feel so much better about today. It's been kind of a grinder. I'll be honest. I've 
got a little bit frustrated there in the mid morning to afternoon. I figured this day was a wash, but that right there, that's, oh, it's our second bow of the day. That's so good. All right, no more fish out of there. We did have a few more bites, so I think it might be worth talking about the rig. We're rocking a double nymph setup under a New Zealand strike indicator. And we had one going off of that guy. And that's just a kind of a Copper John variant, more on the gold side of the Copper John. And then what we got that last fish on was, again, I call this a little scrimp. It's a scud sow bug just very general buggy pattern I've got the video on how to tie it linked down below so go check out the little scrimp and yeah under the New Zealand strike indicator and that's kind of the rig that we got these fish on well hooked and then actually caught one but man this this waterfall this is so dang cool I'm really liking it Was a fish rats yes yeah absolutely perfect well that right there is another excellent whoo fast water fish man they are sitting so tight to these really deep plunge pools. It's it's very interesting fishing this water. It's new and uh, somewhat confusing, but we're getting it. Just a little piece by piece, we're getting it. <laughs> it's so awesome. We have harassed this guy long enough. We'll see him back. Thank you, sir. Get back to your riffle, man. Looks like our road is ending here. That's way too treacherous and it's way too late in the day for us to go any further down. So let's hike back upstream. Very nice. Looks like he's been caught before. All right. Thank you, sir. There we go, eight ball corner pocket, baby. Another beautiful fish. I just couldn't help myself. I know that sun's going down, but man, I wanted to come back to the waterfall and just try a couple more casts. This very well could be our last fish today, so that's why I want to show you guys, because damn, it is so gorgeous. Okay, upon further inspection, this fish has a hook in its face. Check this out. Are y'all seeing that? That is so wild. Let's Dr. Mike get up real quick and see if we can't get that out. That is insane. That is a massive hook. Oh my God. And someone just uh, must have broken off or something. Golly Jones. Oh, imagine having that in your face. That is gnarls. Post off, that's still one beautiful, beautiful fish. These wild Georgia. Wild Georgia bows got something going on. I'm digging it, man. This is so nice. Yeah, it's sweet. Well, let's uh, get this cheeky boy back. Well, see you, sir. Time check is just after 3.15, and that sun keeps going up and over the ridges, and as it kind of hits pockets, we'll get a little bit of warmth, but otherwise, it's really starting to cool off. Getting three fish out of this one waterfall is so cool. I mean, that's that kind of is making my day. That's so amazing. Let's kind of get things packed up, and that's yeah, so what this hike out, man. We got a long way to go, 
but after catching all those fish, I think I can be more than happy with the price to pay, the, the brass taxes I like to call it. So yeah, this is sweet, man. Let's uh, get this going. Oh my God. The camera never does something like this justice, but that, holy cow. We're at the bushwhack and we probably cut a mile off our hike, but God bless America. Whew, that was touch and go. Okay, let's get to hiking. As we hustled down the trail, I couldn't help but think about how much these winter adventures make me miss long summer days. Having to hike out of a location at 4 p.m. instead of 8 p.m is an absolute drag, but I will say, I'm glad the Southern Appalachians stay warm enough well into the winter to even allow us to have something like this. Well, folks, we have made it. If you can see that, the sun is setting, and boom, there's our truck. What a day. 13 miles later and our Jack's Creek adventure is done. Excuse me, Jack's River. Seeing the falls is amazing, but I can't, I can't get ahead of myself because the day is not over. We still have to make our way to Blue Ridge and that's gonna be a long drive through the woods. So we need to do that before the sun gets down. And yeah, we've got a sweet treat waiting for us there. So stick with. With just a sliver of light left in the air, all we needed was a PBJ and a damn fine podcast and we were able to get up and off of the mountain in no time, hit that blacktop, and make it to Blue Ridge with time to spare. I told you we had a sweet treat. This right here is our Airbnb for the moment. This is gonna be our base of operations while we're here in Blue Ridge. And yeah, I can't wait to get in there and get a shower and maybe some bed. This is, oh, this is a luxury. Let's get in here. Alrighty, all our stuff is in and I'm gonna do a quick little tour here of this absolutely beautiful cabin. This is so nice. I can't, I can't gas this up enough, but as you can see, Get the living room, get the kitchen. That is so flipping nice. And here we've got the main bedroom. This really sweet bathroom. Holy cow. And my bum butt. Yeah, there we go. Good stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, this is just so stinking nice. This is going to be the perfect place to kind of base my operations because I'm going to be in and around the Blue Ridge area for the next few days. And yeah, I'm gonna have an absolutely beautiful place to come back to, kind of rest the bones a bit, shower, take a nice long snooze. So that's about kind of where I'm at right now. I need to do all of those things because it's been a long few days on the road and uh, yeah, I'm ready. So folks, before I scoot, thank you so much for sticking around today. This was kind of a grinder session, turned up a little bit towards the end, made it happen and now we are just absolutely just blessed with this really sweet Airbnb. So folks, I just gotta say, for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, consider it. I've been trying to put out content like this at least once a week, and you know, two if I'm really feeling lucky. But yeah, it's amazing to see how quick this kind of, I don't know, this channel is growing. It's going so, so well and growing so fast, and I have you guys to thank for that. So of course, thank you. And, on top of that, we've got the website, we've got the Discord, Instagram, Patreon, everything. Your support seriously means the world, so go check out all those. The more you know, stuff like Patreon is uh, used, then I can come and do cool stuff like this, and you guys are helping with that. So it's, uh, it's so cool to see. And the last huge free fast shout out before I scoot is to the folks here at this Airbnb. I've got all their information listed down below. So when you come to Blue Ridge, you gotta check them out. They have such a nice pad and you'll see it throughout the week. So this might be the first time you're hearing it, but it certainly won't be the last. So folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in the Blue Ridge Mountains or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.